What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We're back doing another preview video. The first one for round three of the Rugby World Cup 2023. The rugby doesn't stop. The videos never stop. We're just going to keep on plowing on through because this game kicks off on Wednesday. Probably the earliest game I think we've had so far over this World Cup. Italy versus Uruguay. A game that... I think if you went back about two, three weeks ago, I'd say there's a clear favourite going into this one. I can see this one going one way. We got to see Uruguay play for the first time last week up against France. And my God, did they put in a superb performance and took that game to France. And there were some big decisions in that game around, you know, head contact, yellow card, could have been a red card. Had it been a red card, how differently could that game have turned out? Could that game have turned into uh, the big upset of this uh, this World Cup going into it? But a superb performance by Uruguay. As we do in these videos, we're going to have a run through of the teams that have been announced for both sides are going to be playing this week. Have a look through the players, do some good picks, some bad picks, and finally, of course, giving our score prediction make sure you drop down in the comment section your thoughts on the teams hit the like button subscribe do all that fun youtube stuff that really does help the channel out starting in with Italy. Now, Italy are uh, class the home team for this one. Italy didn't play last week. They had their bye week last week. The first week they played, they played against Namibia. They took that score quite convincingly, 52 points to 8. Uh, and while the scoreboard looked... You know, really solid by the end of it. They will have been happy with that score. They got the bonus point. They did everything they needed to do. Still a couple of things looking a bit rusty. A couple of things not going quite their way. Finishing off the job. Sometimes they got sort of stuck in no man's land. People were just chucking the ball to one another. It didn't feel completely coordinated by the end of it. Maybe it doesn't matter that much. They got the big score and stuff. But there were a couple of plays that you expect big performances from. Didn't really live up to expectations. Then some other players who actually uh, completely exceeded expectations for uh, for Italy. So starting out in this front row, one change from that game versus Namibia. We've got uh, Fischetti, Nicotera, and Riccioni coming in in that tighter prop. We had Ferrari uh, going in against Namibia. So uh, basically keeping the same front row. I think they'll be. Really keeping a close eye on this Uruguay team because Uruguay, while they were playing well over the field, the, the scrummaging area was one area that it felt like France probably had an advantage in in that game. Um, so Italy will probably be paying close attention to that at the set piece and thinking the scrums is an area we want to compete at and they'll want to try and stamp down their uh, their own marker on uh, on that scrummaging area. In the lock department, Nicolo Canone comes in alongside Federico Ruzza this week. Uh, Dino Lam uh, has been moved to the bench who, uh, to be honest, I feel like we haven't got to see a lot from Dino Lam, but he's really beginning to sort of warm up into this Italian team. I think the last three games I've seen him in, he seems to have scored tries. Um, he's really looking to get his hands on the ball, a, a really opportune moment. Him and Federico Ruzza playing alongside each other is actually quite a dangerous lock department. Um, Nicolo Canone, for a lot of people, would be, you know, someone you want to have in that starting team. But Dino Lam's Kind of been impressing me. I think it's kind of a shame he's not going to be starting this one. Nicolo Canone, though, trying to make the most of, uh, of his start. I assume Dino Lam may even come on for Rutsa in that uh, that second half. They seem to not want to play Rutsa for the full 80 anymore, um, even though I think he's more than uh, than capable. It'll be interesting to see how they make that swap up um, in that second half. In the back row, uh, Sebastian Negri going in alongside of Lomaro and the uh, the other Canone, Lorenzo Canone, um, in that number eight shirt, who I think was one of the highest scoring back rows in the uh, in the fantasy in that opening week. Um, this is a back row that I think works really well for, uh, for Italy. Lomaro, especially as a captain and just involved in the breakdown um, I think as a, a superb player who's definitely making his name known in that uh, that game against Namibia Negri man you give this guy an inch of space he's going to carry that ball hard at you and uh, we've seen him score tries in the Six Nations and can do it again in this one um, it's a front eight uh, looking really solid for Italy not a lot of changes to talk about only two changes but you could maybe argue they've gotten a little bit stronger from those um, from those changes but I have to say Dino Lamb has been uh, has been impressing me in that uh, that lock department in the halfback partnership switching it up this week Alessandro Garbisi going in at scrum half alongside of Tommaso Alan where we've been seeing him play at fullback um, and they've been trying some different things out with how they want to organize these backs uh this week uh Tommaso Alan going in at the fly half shirt Paolo Garbisi moving to center mixing it up trying something new I mean a team like Uruguay you might have thought I probably would have thought you know in a bit of naive way uh Uruguay is one of the teams you could test this out against uh maybe not if this goes wrong for you and we sort of saw it with the France team putting on the B team last week maybe not showing Uruguay enough respect 
they'll come for you. They'll punish you for those sort of mistakes. So we'll have to hope this uh, this partnership works out for them. As mentioned, then in the centre partnership, Paolo Garbisi going in alongside of Brex. Um, one of those players in that, that opening week who I think was a lot more quiet than I expected anyway, um, was just playing his defensive game when Namibia had the ball in their hands. Um, but other than that, yeah, I didn't really have a lot to talk about from uh, from Brex in terms of a uh, an attacking standpoint. Uh, we'll see what difference it makes having Paolo Garbisi going at 12 and giving them that sort of double distributor um, off the back of the ruck. Maybe that will enhance how fast um, Italy can get the ball going wide. And then in the back three, Monte Iwani takes the left wing, Pani taking over the right wing, and Capuozzo going in in that fullback shirt. Another player that I saw a lot of people putting him in the fantasy. A lot of people had Capuozzo, people had him as captain. Um, and I don't think he touched the ball in the first half, um, was incredibly quiet. Italy could not get that ball out wide to him very early at all. They went in at half time and then they made some changes. And I'm still not quite sure how the changes work for them because uh, Capuoto stayed on the field and yet uh, Pani and Odogwu came on, right? So they brought on like two wingers and yet Capuoto was still on the field. So I assume he moved into center, but he spent the entire second half stood about two feet away from Monte Iwani on his wings. So there was like two wingers on one side plus two other wingers plus Alan was at the back. I was struggling to work out what was going on, but he managed to get into the game in that second half. Annoyingly, he kept taking the ball off Iwani. I had Iwani in the fantasy, so <laughs> I wanted to see him have the ball in his hands more. Uh, but Capuoto did go for his try. He had some superb um, runs in that second half, but took him a long time to get into the game. Hopefully, he can get his hands on the ball a little bit more in that, uh, that fullback position attempt some of those big counter runs that we know he can do um so Italy mixing it up trying something a bit new in this uh, in this back selection we'll have to see how it, uh, how it works out for them we're switching it uh, around a little bit and then quickly in terms of the substitutes Luca Bigi goes in alongside of Federico Zani and Ceccarelli coming in there as the replacement front rows the rest of the replacement forwards Dino Lamb going in alongside of Zuliani and Giovanni Pettinelli uh, to come on so Italy have gone for the 6-2 split maybe that is both just to give them some longevity in the forwards. They they probably would have seen that the only real area where it looked like France were having, you know, a better time in against that Uruguay team was involved in some of the driving malls and some of the scrums. Maybe they're thinking by backing their own forwards, this could be a bit more of a muscly game and they could just try and power over. Um, Uruguay, maybe they're looking at injuries and, you know, thinking about that back row. Italy have still got two massive games coming up for them in terms of trying to qualify out of this pool. They're going up against France. They've still got New Zealand to go um, so avoiding injuries to some of those back row players I you know maybe having a, a couple of other choices at flanker to come on in that second half just to make sure people like Lamaro and Negri um, are going to be okay is probably a, a pretty sound move and then finally in the replacement backs Alessandro Fusco will be coming on at scrum half at some point and Adogwu um, also to come on now uh, Adogwu seems like they're they're trying about some different positions as well they feel like he can go centre and wing um, of course you've already got Paolo Garbisi on so an injury at 10 then Garbisi swaps over, Odogu comes in at center. If there's an injury to a winger, you can chuck Odogu straight on. Maybe they move Tommaso Alan back to fullback, keep uh, Capuoto for the um, for the winger, and then move Garbisi around. There's a lot of versatility in this uh, Italy team. They're getting away with quite a lot here um, with having those two players on the on the bench in the replacement backs. Overall, it's looking like a, a good Italy team. But uh, I think this one might be one of those games that's flying under people's radars for maybe one of the more exciting games going on this weekend. Moving on to the uh, the Uruguay team. And if anyone, um, I've seen a couple of different pronunciations for Uruguay, by the way. Over here in the UK, I've only ever heard people call Uruguay Uruguay. Um, but I did hear a couple of the commentators calling them Uruguay. Um, so if that's a better pronunciation, let me know down in the comments. What's a better phonetic spelling? I always enjoy learning uh, some different pronunciations and what's like a more preferable one. I don't know if we have any Uruguay uh, subscribers on the channel, but if we do, hey, that's uh, always some uh, some useful information to, to know about. So Uruguay last week um, played France and just came out of the blocks attack that game France maybe a bit naively putting on so much of a B team um, and they really felt like they could be competitive I saw the press conference after the game with the uh, with the captain and he was talking about that they came into this game they didn't consider themselves like underdogs they didn't consider themselves as a team coming in just to give France a good game they came to win they wanted to write a page in history they kept re referring to that pe that phrase um, and that they were really looking to try and take this of course they beat Fiji in the last World Cup um, 
Um, and then they were coming in, they want to put their stamp down, they want to be playing in bigger competitions, they want to play against tougher rivals. Um, and that's what they're trying to lay down in this uh, in this tournament. And uh, you say they, they really, really impressed me in a lot of different areas. You guys were very helpful in the uh, in the last pre-video. I will never claim to be a big aficionado about every team in world rugby. Unfortunately, Uruguay is one of those teams over here in the UK, at least. There's no television coverage. I The last game I saw before the France game last week was Uruguay-Fiji four years ago. And I've never seen one since. They're not on TV. There's no coverage. It's quite hard for us to like learn about it over here. And it's a team I'd love to see more from. I enjoy watching these sort of, you know, the quote-unquote tier two teams when they come in to the World Cup. I love watching Fiji and Georgia and Uruguay. I kind of wish we weren't having this new tournament they're building in, was it 2026, 2027, where it's going to be like this mini World Cup. I'd much rather see a tournament between all of those tier two teams. So we get to have a little bit more TV coverage of them. Uh, but you guys have been really helpful last week. You were letting me know uh, Arata in the um, in the scrum half position was the one to watch, the keen eye. Um, and I was keeping a close eye on him and what a game he had. I believe he's doing very well um, at club level over in uh, in France. And uh, yeah, you had to say he was having a, uh, an awesome game. How differently that game could have gone, of course, he got that elbow to the head uh, from Taufai Fenua was awarded a yellow card. I've seen tackles less bad than that get red cards. Um, and had France got a red card in that game, could Uruguay have, have taken that one? You have to say they were looking very good in a lot of different areas. Um, a couple of other names that stood out to me. Uh, Freitas in the in the left wing looked very, very dangerous on uh, on attack. And then finally, the, uh, the fullback. Hopefully, I'm going to get this pronunciation right. It's like Amagia. Um, who, again, on those counter runs, coming from that fullback position, helping out other players, pushing himself up onto the line. Um, solid, solid player in terms of attack. So um, I'm hoping to learn a little bit more about Uruguay over the course of this World Cup. Unfortunately, it's one of the teams I can't dive um, a lot into. I'm going to be trying to pick out some new players every week and try and focus on some new ones. Um, just to broaden my own knowledge, it's rugby, guys. There's a lot of teams to uh, to take into account. Unfortunately, Uruguay falls on the, the, the sort of area where I don't have quite as much knowledge. Um, but one of the games I'm really looking forward to because when we think in terms of a of a score prediction for this one france won that game 27 points to 12 last week um so only 15 points short and italy although they're looking good on attack and look like they're scoring points um they conceded some points against namibia you look over to the you know the new zealand game they only conceded three versus namibia with a bit of a b team new zealand coming on it was quite an a team um, Italy team going up against Namibia and they conceded even more. Um, I can see Italy conceding some points. I can see them going for big scoring of points. Um, in terms of a score prediction, quite a hard one to call. Uruguay just need to get a couple of those little things right. We saw them last week losing line outs, getting a little bit dominated in the scrum at different points um, and just not finishing off those opportunities. They did so much hard work, so good in the breakdown, getting those turnovers and making the room at the pitch. Uh, but then that final 5%, getting close to the try line, you've just got to be clinical and they were just getting a couple of things wrong. Against Italy, maybe they can put those extra pieces in place and just get those things working together. I'm still leaning towards Italy for this win. Um, but it's going to be a lot less than I would have said two weeks ago. I'm going to say Italy to win this one. I think I'll maybe aim for a similar scoreline to um, to France. I think I'll say Italy to win this one by 15. Um, but genuinely, if you didn't catch the Uruguay-France game last week, Keep an eye out for this game. Of course, this game is on Wednesday evening. So in terms of getting your fantasy teams together, uh, you want to uh, be getting them done kind of early this week. There's going to be a lot of guesswork involved with the, uh, the fantasy teams. But in terms of games to watch over the course of the weekend, we do have some big games, some pool deciding games, you have to say. Uh, but in terms of enjoyable matches to sit down and watch, maybe as a neutral, um, I would rank this one up there very highly. I'm really looking forward to this one. Drop your thoughts on the teams down in the uh, in the comment section because I do enjoy having a read through them. Of course, we'll be doing more preview videos across the week, even if the fantasy teams have to be locked in by then. We'll still keep them going over the course of the week because there's some big games on this weekend. I hope you've all enjoyed this one today, guys. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.